How's it going everybody? My name is Zach. I'm one of the owners here at Cardinal Gaming Repair and recently I started a Facebook group for TCG Robotics and Automation and with the creation of that group I told everybody I would uh, show the manner in which that we use our Rokish sorting machines that you see here behind me uh, along with the infrastructure that we have set up uh, just to give people who may not currently use a machine in some capacity an idea of how they could use it while also giving uh, people who use uh, these devices in some similar fashion a chance to critique our setup and see where we could make improvements one way or the other. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this camera around and we are going to start with an overview of the machines themselves. Uh, both of these machines currently are going through doing bulk sifts. Uh, our parameters are set to uh, 20 cents as the threshold. So anything below 20 cents gets put into one pile and anything above 20 cents gets put into another pile. Uh, the only thing that we do uh, before putting cards in for this initial, what we call, this is the sift, we do a pre-sift and we have kind of the basic instructions for this. You can probably pause the video and uh, get a good idea of, of how we have our sifting criteria set up. Uh, we do a pre-sift where pretty much what we do is separate the separate cards by how the Roka sorters are able to identify them, um, mostly just being non-foil, which this is a non-foil sift that is staged for when the next sort fin or next sift finishes. Uh, so you have non-foil, foil, and then special foil. Those are the three uh, ways that the Roka machines are able to detect cards, and it is important to have your your uh, identification method set up correctly by the sort that you're doing. Otherwise, you're going to have cards being scanned incorrectly. You know, a card that's foil being referenced as a special foil, or vice versa. So it's good to, to do at least an initial pre-sift to make sure that you are uh, getting the most out of each of your initial sifts because you have all of the cards in the uh, in the you have all of the cards based on the criteria that you're using for the sift. Uh, once a sift is finished, we end up with. Uh, Two different piles, like I said, piles that, well, this is incorrect, it says 25 cents, and we lowered ours to 20 cents recently. Uh, we have two piles of cards. The pile that is above our price threshold, uh, those cards all get sorted out by condition. We have two stacks. Uh, this is non-foil, this is foil, and then uh, all of our special foils, at least for right now, are being manual sorted and inventoried. So uh, after a card passes our 20 cent threshold, it gets filed away by condition into these boxes. And then once these boxes get full enough, uh, we do an actual Roka sort where it will go through and I'll even, uh, well I can't really show the, uh, the, how the, the function looks on the tablet, but uh, you're able to go through and set a sort function to place the cards in the designated order that you that you want. In our case, we use name set using TCG Player Direct uh, sorting order uh, because all of our inventory is set up with that order because we sell on TCG Player Direct. Uh, it makes the process of pulling cards substantially easier, especially when we have you know a large RI reimbursement invoice through TCG Player Direct. So a lot of good incentive to, to use that uh, sorting structure if you're gonna be selling cards in the same manner that we are. Um, and then we have like right down here, this is part of a pre-sift. We pull out all foreign non-foil, uh, all foreign foil. And then uh, when, a, when our foil stack gets to be about 850 cards, or pretty much when the, the box fills up, we will do an entire foil sift using the same parameters to uh, 
pull out valuable foils from non-valuable. And then moving down here, this is our basic land box. And then uh, these boxes, it's sifted special lands, sifted full art basics, sifted foil basics, sifted foil full arts, sifted foil special lands. So those are like your promos and things that are not like a normal basic land, just uh, not foil or foil and not like a full art or something like that. Going down here, this is where the most of our stuff ends up out of a, after a sift. This is the sifted common, uncommon bulk, sifted rares, sifted mythics, sifted foil common, uncommons, sifted foil rares, sifted foil mythics, sifted promos, sifted unsets, and sifted tokens. And the reason why we have this uh, infrastructure set up the way that it is is pretty much to make the process of selling bulk uh, easier and maximizing the value because we have all of the uh, all of our sifted stuff categorized by how people would buy stuff uh, as per the TCG Bulk Kings website I think that's what it's called uh, we we reference that website to uh, figure out how we should have this stuff spread out so that when we go to sell to somebody sell all of our bulk to someone that we're able to get you know the most for each type of card that we're able to so once a full condition based sort happens so for example let's say we ran a full near mint sort uh, also during the sorting process we're able to do a second sift so cards that may have uh, that through the initial sort may have been above 20 cents during that time but have shifted to below uh, 20 cents uh, a, a second pre-sift happens along with the sort uh, and with the Roka machine you just use a divider so that uh, it separates the two piles the everything before the divider is going to be your actual sort and everything after the divider is going to be the stuff that was sifted uh, along with the sort that you did so once you have a, let's say we run a full sort of near mint through the Roka machine, what it spits out is, well, these are validated. Uh, this tall string of boxes, which are all uh, actual sorts. So this one, for example, number 180, is a complete sort. All of this stuff passes our threshold and uh, is ready to be validated for entry into uh, TCG player. So we go through these sorts and do a validation where we reference the spreadsheet that the Roka machine gives us and it gives us a if we're once we're able to verify that the uh, sort accurately references the spreadsheet we move it into a validated sort status where the only thing that needs to be done with these is they need to be filed away into our system. Uh, if you're starting to see a pattern with our system as it exists currently is there's a lot of backlog to do and we are finding out now with having two uh, Roka machines that the the machines are starting to outpace the amount of work we're able to get done uh, with just the raw manpower we have currently. So we're gonna we're gonna try to staff accordingly, get a couple more bodies working on this more specifically, so that we can uh, we can start putting a dent in this. So these are, for example, our near mint validated swords. The only thing that needs to be done with these is uh, that specific sort. Let's say. Uh, 177 this sort the spreadsheet should accurately reference this sort for us to be able to drop that spreadsheet into a uh, TCG player and just file these cards away into the system um, and at that point then it's pretty much just you know wait for the stuff to sell uh, one thing that we do do when we're doing imports of the uh, spreadsheets is we take the price as it exists in the spreadsheet and apply our own formulas to them based off of uh, daily 
import and export of the TCG player database. Uh, we manually update pricing ourselves through spreadsheet manipulation uh, rather than using mass price. We've kind of we've kind of found a lot of flaws in in mass price when you're trying to you know more accurately update pricing based on on your rate of sales versus just what uh, what few metrics you're able to to get using mass price so uh, that system works very well for us and the only thing we have to do when we are adding information or adding cards to the to our system via a spreadsheet is use a formula to reference our other spreadsheet that has the correct pricing to apply that pricing to these cards that are being put in and then when we add them to our system they get uploaded with the correct pricing so uh, this is you know uh, pretty much uh, we have this is near mint validated this is light play validated moderately play heavy play damage and so on uh, this is the the layout of the infrastructure that we have to put together to uh, give a place for every card either uh, before or after a sort and then just to give you guys an example of the ridiculous amount of work that we have ahead of us is this is our back of house it's kind of chaotic back here but uh, this is uh, Mount Bulk uh, these are, uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, let's say 21 high, 2 deep, uh, give or take. So 20 high, 2 deep, if you can get up there, see it goes back uh, 2 sections deep. This is everything from here. And is just our magic stuff, and then everything over here is uh, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, and I think even still some more magic stuff. This is uh, this is our backlog. Uh, this is what we are putting through the sorters right now. I know a lot of people uh, they're rogue machines to input. Car, uh, input inventory just by cracking new product and that is something that we are looking into doing once we uh, kind of make a good dent on the ridiculous backlog that we have uh, but we, it seems like we have a long way to go before we we get there uh, so that's pretty much a a general overview of how we use our Roka machines uh, I could you know Go, show, going in and showing you like the exact process of how these work it's you know you on a sift you get 850 cards roughly in a sift and it takes about an hour to uh, split spit out the uh, sifted inventory you know the two stacks your cheap stuff and your your inventoryable stuff um, and then it takes about an hour and a half to do an actual sort uh, so that kind of gives you an idea of uh, you know what you can expect to get, or like what it what kind of time it takes to to get through a sift and a sort, at least using the Roka machines. Uh, other machines that are available, uh, they you know do something similarly, something different, and um, so I can't speak on those. But at least with the Roka machines, this is uh, what you can roughly expect in terms of time for for output. Uh, with that being said, uh, the only the only questions that I have for you guys, um, the first is for those who who use these machines, uh, whether it's the Roka or, or a similar device in any capacity, uh, what what things are you doing that you feel like would be uh, a better process for us to implement? And then second, is there uh, given that I've explained, you know, the threshold that we use for determining what is considered bulk and not, uh, is there is there a chance that we're, you know, leaving good money on the table? Because I know that there's a lot of situations where, um, you know, just because a card is less than 20 cents doesn't mean it's necessarily not a a high volume selling card. And I would love to capture those those uh, those cards when the opportunity uh, presents itself. 
and I know right now, right now, just with our basic sorting, our basic sifting setup, it uh, there's there's a lot of stuff that's fallen through the cracks that, that we're not capturing. So, uh, if you guys have any any questions, comments, input, criticisms about how we use our Roka machines uh, in any capacity, you know, things that we're doing right and you want to give us a pat on the back for, or things that you think we're just monumentally failing on and, and should should implement a change immediately. Um, be more than happy to, to go over any of this stuff with you guys. Like I said, we made a Facebook page for uh, TCG Robotics and Automation. I'm going to put the link for that uh, in the description down below. And if you guys aren't already subscribed, subscribe, like, share, comment, all that good stuff. And I uh, hope to see you guys in the next one. Uh, like I said, if you have any questions, you can you can comment here on this video, or you can go to the uh, the Facebook page and and interface with with us along with a lot of other people who either already use this stuff or are you know looking into uh, seeing if robotics is the right fit for them as well. So. That's all I have for you guys. I appreciate you watching the video, and uh, like I said, see you, see you in the next one. Bye now.